Welcome back. Joining me now via Skype is Survivor Champion Yul Kwan. How are you, Yul? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. The real thank you for being here. The real question is: Are you happy to not be stranded on an island anymore? <laughs> You're asking if I'm happy to be fed and clothed and uh, near my family. Yeah, totally. <laughs> those, not like yeah, those seems like basic necessities that would be fun using toilet paper and things like that. <laughs> is it ever kind of nice though to be on an island, or is it always a challenge? You know, it's funny. I when when you're out there, you're just totally miserable, right? I mean, I, I hadn't gone on Survivor in like 13 years, so I'd forgotten how, how crappy it was. I mean, it, you know, you just kind of remember the highlights and you forget how hard it is. And when I got back there, I was just like, oh my God, what am I doing? Why did I come back here? Um, so coming back, I was really happy, but I, I don't know, I will say in some ways I felt healthier out there. Like just to give an example, uh, my whole life I've had migraines and I grind my teeth at night, so I wear a night guard. And as soon as I got out there, I stopped grinding my teeth and I stopped getting migraines. And the day I came back, I started grinding and getting headaches again. That's so interesting. What do you think is the reason for that? The fresh air or is it just a different kind of stress? I think it's a combination of stuff. I, you know, I, I've been thinking about it. I think one thing is you're sleeping when the sun goes down and you wake up when the sun comes up. So your, your sleep habits are like completely aligned with your circadian rhythm. So there's not like artificial light that's keeping you up. I think the diet out there, like here we're eating all this processed food and out there you're pretty much eating nothing. I think that makes a difference. Indeed. But I think the other thing is, you know, when you're out on an island, you're stressed out, but they're very concrete stressors, right? Like you're hungry, you need to find food, you're cold, you need to make a fire. And they're usually something you could do something about. In modern life though, you know, there's all these stresses, you know, these kind of ambiguous amorphous stresses like financial stress, job stress, uh, identity, stress, what I'm going to do with my life, all that kind of stuff. And you can't immediately do anything about it. And I think that, that just kind of adds up. And so that actually creates this underlying stress and anxiety that a lot of us feel all the time. That's so fascinating. I never thought about it like that. But I want to get into last week's episode, speaking of the island, because Adam was feeling the heat after it was discovered that he was playing both sides. Let's watch. Adam told me the plan to vote you off, and I blew it up to everybody because I told them that Adam was playing both sides. I just did everything that you're not supposed to do in Survivor, and I had the hubris to think that I could get away with it. You went and told Rob the whole plan, dude? Well, if this had happened in your tribe, Yule, would you ever be able to trust Adam again? This seems like a rookie <laughs> mistake. You know... If you're kind of playing both sides of it, it's hard to trust somebody. On the other hand, like, he's basically burned all of his allies, right? Like, he has no one to go to, so he may be just looking for anyone to, like, pick him up like a puppy. Well, that's actually a good point, but playing both sides isn't uncommon for Survivor. Would you have tried this approach in a game full of winners? I don't know. You know, I think Adam probably took an approach that might have worked with a bunch of newbies, uh, but in this case, like, people can kind of see through it, and... You know, one thing that you don't want to do is share information that gets shared by the person you're telling to the other alliance or people on their own alliance. And so I think he, in this case, he probably talked a little bit too much and it kind of blew up in his face. Yeah, loose lips sink ships. I mean, listen, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes that you can make and one wrong mistake can sort of affect your entire, you know, island experience. Would you say that his biggest mistake, though, was trusting the wrong people? That's a tough one, you know, like, maybe. Uh, who you end up trusting in the game, I think, really kind of determines how things play out. If you if you pick the right people and you stick with them and they, they don't stab you in the back, then I think you can get really far. But in this game, it's really hard because, you know, alliances shift all the time. Like it's, when I played back in, uh, you know, season 13, I think there was more of a sense that you stick with your alliance all the way to the end. But nowadays, it's basically like every single vote, there's a new alliance. Every single week, there's something different. It's hard to keep up. Boston, right. Boston Rob wasn't a big fan of Adam and was willing to do anything to get him out, even lie. Let's take a look. What should I do about Adam? Because he keeps trying to talk to me. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, you already done them. You already done me. Yeah. What do you want me to do? So what name would you feel comfortable with right now? Right now with Adam. Like, I don't trust Adam at all. Like, Adam got to go. All right, is there any chance that this could backfire on Rob? It could. I mean, if he were essentially caught in his lie, right, then somehow if that were exposed, then that would undermine his own credibility. 
Um, but again, you know, Survivor is, everyone tells a lie. It's one thing that I found that's different from the first time I played. The dynamics of the game have evolved such that you can't not lie. I mean, literally, when I played the first time, I, I did a lot of misleading, I did a lot of like insinuation, but I don't actually think I told a blatant lie, I think, for the whole season. This time around, it's impossible. You have to lie pretty much like all the time. Well, yeah, you're dealing with the best of the best, so they know all the tricks. You know, the first time around, it might be a little bit easier. You're more trusting. But Adam and the rest of the Sele tribe were able to get themselves out of hot water during the challenge. Your tribe, though, had a major lead. What happened during the puzzle? <laughs> you know, puzzles are, the way that I, you describe it is, all the physical stuff at the beginning is just window dressing. You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to the puzzle. The puzzles take so much time that, like, everything else is just kind of prelude to it. So more often than not, the challenge will be determined by the puzzle. So in this case, look, we had a huge lead, but it didn't matter because we, we lost it on the puzzle. Yeah, I always think it's a little bit easier to train for those physical challenges as opposed to the mental ones because you really never know what you're going to get with the mental ones. Am I right about that, or are they both, by yeah. both difficult? They're, they're both hard. You, you never quite know exactly what they're going to do. But, you know, if you watch enough of the seasons, you get a sense for what kind of stuff you want to train for. In my case, uh, the first time I went on, I just went to the gym a lot, and I got pretty big, but it wasn't super helpful for me. Uh, this time around, I did a lot more balance work, a lot more stuff where you're not just using, like, straight brawn, but you're using kind of more uh, agility and balance to, like, get ahead. On the puzzle stuff, you know, they tend to use similar puzzles over and over again. So one thing that you have to know is how to do a slide puzzle. There's always a slide puzzle challenge in every season of Survivor. And there's like a mad magic or method to the madness. If there's like, you should basically understand how slide puzzles work. You can have what's, you know, basically an algorithm to kind of figure out how to get these done. Now, you can't figure out what every puzzle is going to be. But in, you know, a number of cases, like, for example, if you're trying to do a combination lock, there's another kind of pattern that you can use to make sure you go through every possible combination so that you don't kind of end up doing the same numbers over and over again. So that kind of stuff you can train for a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of a life hack there. You know, there were two plans going on. Eliminate Nick, who messed up the puzzle, or Tyson, a very strong player. Do you think the right choice was made? Well, you know, I can't, I can't get into it too much because we're, we're still in the season itself. But, uh, you know, I, for my part, I was part of the alliance that ultimately ended up voting out Tyson. And so whether that was a right call or a wrong call, that's TBD. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there was there's a lot behind the scenes that isn't shown on television. I, I think, you know, it's great to have a lot of the stories on Extinction. Like the, the piece on Ethan I thought was amazing. Ethan is someone I have so much respect for, just given the kind of winner he was and using so much of his time and money to support like really awesome causes. Um, but you know, the consequence of that is that you end up having less airtime to show what actually happens in a tribe and what leads up to the vote. And so there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes and a lot of strategy that, that frankly just doesn't make it onto air. Well, Yule, thank you so much for chatting with me. You are the absolute best. You make me want to be stranded on an island fighting for my life. Can I, can I mention one thing? Uh, you know, uh, this uh, episode tonight is going to be a big one. Uh, one of the reasons, if not the main reason, I went back on Survivor was because I wanted to help Jonathan Penner and his wife. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but Jonathan Penner's wife has ALS. Uh, Jonathan and I were on Cook Islands together. We had a very complicated relationship. You know, he backstabbed me. I backstabbed him. Uh, but after the game, we ended up becoming very close friends. And then two years ago, Stacy, his wife, had, uh, was diagnosed with ALS, and it's basically almost at the end for her. Uh, the real tragedy is that she has a version of ALS that's genetic in nature, and so each of their two children has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease. So, you know, one thing that we're all trying to do, and it's been great, all the survivor contestants have been working together with CBS, and tonight we're going to be launching a campaign to try to raise awareness and funds to support ALS research. So I uh, hope you'll tune in. It's going to be an emotional episode for me. I'll be doing a lot of crying, frankly. Oh. Um, but I think we can do something to really help them and other families that are in need. Yule, thank you so much for that. I mean, honestly, as if we couldn't love you more, just saying that makes us love you even more. Thank you so much for that. Okay, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks, Yule. Catch a brand new episode of Survivor tonight at 8, 7 central on CBS.